Happy Valentine. Now we are to discuss on some relationship issues and some love issues. Just short discussion. This part of the short discussion will be online. After the short discussion, we are going to go into movie mood. In that movie mood, we have some popcorns and some juice. Is that a good one? So if you want to watch the movie to the end, you can stay to the end. I don't know how long the movie is. Um, the media team, they just got that organized this evening. Yesterday, I threw a question online and I told everyone who participated that I'm going to be reading out what they said online. We asked a question, what is love? And most of my followers online, we are throwing light on what love is. We told them yesterday that it will make an integral part of our lecture this evening on the matter of love. You're going to ask questions. We'll run through it. The first person threw in and commented, her name is Precious Onomajuru. Precious Onomajuru. She says, true love is forgiving and giving. True love is what? Forgiving and giving. 100% correct. Do you know why love is forgiving and giving? Because the one you love must offend you someday. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. If you are praying to enter into a relationship where there will be no offense, then the prayer is wrong. Your prayer should be not even to enter into any relationship. Because the both of you, we are from a different foundation. What pleases you is not what pleases Mr. B or Mr. A. So you might be stepping on each other's toes once in a while. That is where forgiving is. And he said it is also giving. Give. Any relationship and marriage that giving is not involved, is, there is no love there. There must be an evidence of, no matter how small, you do what? You give. give. No matter how big, you, you give. give. This evening, I gave to my wife. She gave to me. I bought her an MP3 player that is 10,000. She got me a plaque that I can hang in my office that is also 10,000. But when you look at them, they are too simple. They are not that costly. But little things matter. Little things do what? Matters. That you love someone, you must learn to give whatever little... Today, that is my level what I have to give. Tomorrow, it might be a car. So, it is not on what you are giving. It's not on the price. The heart. Giving and forgiving. Another person commented, he said, Love is sacrifice. Love is selfless. It hurts at times. This one is where I don't, under, I, I don't agree. Love does not hurt. Love does not hurt. It is love that forgives when there is hurt. Do you understand me now? Yes, sir. The person said the name is its favor. He says love is sacrifice. I understand that. Without sacrifice, you can't forgive when they love, when you are hurt. So he says love is selfless. Of course, love looks out for the next person. If you love the next person, you look out for that person. If the person loves you, he or she looks out for you. But where I don't agree is where he says love hurts at times. Love does not hurt. It is love that cures hurt. It's consistent. Yes, I, I, I agree this. Despite how many times you are hurt, love is consistent. Love forgives. Love is jealous but does not envy. Exactly. Love is jealous. See, when you, somebody says they love you, they love you, and sometimes they don't demonstrate a little jealousy, that person does not really love you. Love demonstrates a bit of jealousy, but it's not overprotective. It becomes extreme then. It's jealous. You can't tell me now, as I am, I see you standing with my wife, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, one hour. What are you people talking about? I must be jealous, two of us. Even though it's church matter, I will be like, ah, this person has taken almost one hour of my wife. I am not stopping the discussion, but there is something in my heart that feels like what belongs to me is not close to me. Who belongs to me is not close. That is jealousy. Jealousy is, is love. But where it is disastrous is where that jealousy is too much. 
eh, why are you standing with the person? What are you people talking about? What every time you act like that, you are questioning that is no longer jealousy, that is wickedness. Agape love is a strong bound, fragile like eggs. We either nurture or let it wax good. It brings peace and every other good things. Love. That is what the person says. The next person threw in and says, this next person is Victor GF. He says, according to the Bible, true love is best described by 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. Let's read it and see what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4, 4 to 8, it says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. This passage from the Bible highlights, highlights the characteristics of a true love, which includes patience, kindness, humility, and proof, proof of love is given. This person summarized what love is, according to 1 Corinthians. Another person who threw in his own one couple is Darlington Young Boss. He said, in true love, both partners recognize and value each other's individuality. You recognize my individuality and I recognize your individuality. There is something that makes me me and there is something that makes you you. Love means respecting what makes you you and you respecting what makes me me. Are you getting it now? It also recognizes opinion. Love recognizes that this is your opinion. It does not play down on your opinion and does not play down on my opinion. It recognizes your feelings, your judgment and show of consideration for each other's needs and wishes. Respect in true love means treating each other with kindness and honor, even in disagreement. To my best of knowledge, he concluded. The next student of love that threw in his one kobo is Emiko Edun. Emiko Edun. He says, oh, this one is a very long one. He says, love is not hasty or impetuous. It bears pain or exists calmly. Love always does good and brings happiness and joy to other persons. Love doesn't resent the person's progress. Love doesn't seek to push itself into the spotlight, but gracefully works in humility for general well-being. Love doesn't display excessive self-esteem. It's neither arrogant nor conceited nor condescending towards men of low status. Love is not easily angered. It's gentle and soft with words even in the face of provocation. Love doesn't keep records of wrong. If, understand, if understood, love keeps away from immoral behavior. It hates and condemns sins. Love displays sincerity and honesty. Then finally, we have still many of them. We'll take two or three more. Obed Bongre said, Love is a relationship between man and God where man commits to every day of his life in compliance with the word of God. We also have comments from Titi Lyo from Minister Royal, Royal, from Ibina, from Jennifer, from Obed, and many of them. But we stop it there tonight. I want to share three points of every young person, or three points of what every young person must do, either as a single or as a married person. Either as a single or what? Or as a married person whether you are single or whether you are married these are the three things you must do to make relationship smooth for you first of all first timothy 4 verse 12. first timothy 4 verse 12 says let no man despise thy youth but be 
be thou an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. If you are demonstrating love for either your spouse, your loved one, your husband or your wife, he says in you must in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith and in purity. These are the dimensions through which your love must be portrayed or seen. Hear me, life is in phases. Learn to complete a phase before building another on top of it. If you don't want it to collapse. You are a youth now. Give your youthful life the focus it demands. If you are single now, give your single life the focus it demands. Because when you are married, you can no longer go back to singlehood. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. If you are single, give your single life the attention you can. If you are married, give your marriage the attention you can. Because each phase of life has a demand on you at that particular point. Don't be single and be looking at married people. Oh, I wish it's this one I married. I wish I am married. You are single. Pray for your marriage to come, but live your single life to the full. When I mean single life to, be, to the full, I don't mean moral decadence. I hear me now. Enjoy your single stage. You have energy, you have time to read, you have time to do business, you have time to build upon yourself. Use that time to build upon yourself. You enter marriage, there are things you will not have time to do again. Married people, am I making sense? There are things you used to do as a single person. At married time now, you can't do them again. As a single person, you can watch a movie from time to time. We have time. But as a married person, baby is crying, husband needs this, that person needs this, grandma needs this, mother-in-law needs this. Your time has been divided. True of us. So True. not that you are single, give it all it takes. And you that is married, you are no longer single. Give your marriage all the time it takes. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Now hear me again. Every stage in life is demanding. Never live to fulfill the demands of a particular stage and start focusing on another stage. Wisdom demands that you utilize every moment God gives you because you can't turn back the hands of time. This moment God has given to you, do what? Utilize it. You can't turn back the hands of time. Of time. Now, I want to tell you five important things you must do as a single or as a married person. Number one, travel deep into God before and in marriage. Travel deep into God before and in marriage. Hear me. As a single, use your singlehood to search deep into God. Knowing God for yourself makes you your own marriage counselor. There are some things you might see in marriage that if you don't know God, you will run out of marriage. Travel deep into God. Those moments where you read your Bible is not a waste of time. Those moments where you appear in church is not a waste of time. Those moments where you serve God is not a waste of time. As a single, travel deep into God before you marry. And if you are married, still remain deep into God. First Timothy 4 verse 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be unto them that believe. An example in word, in conversation, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in pure in pureness. Use the energy you, utili you utilize for going from one place to another in search of husband and wife and build your relationship with God. Many people are running out of marriage already. Rather than rushing into it, make time to know God so much because he alone can save you in marriage. If I marry, somebody used to tell me, I will, I will marry a man that will serve me on bed, food, tea, early morning before I wake up. He will not allow me to match ground. I told the person, those men, they are not in earth again, no. maybe they are in Pluto or in Jupiter. Even me, I cannot do that. Too. It means as I'm, as I'm so busy studying, looking for one thing or the other to make ministry, I will now forget everything. As I wake up now, nice to carry a pocket of water to come and wash my wife's feet. Carry her on my back, you will not touch ground. Carry her to the kitchen, carry her and bring her by say your leg will not touch ground. You are an egg. I will hold you like an egg so that you will not break. I think I can do that kind of thing. <laughs> Even though it's in my heart to do it, demands and pursuit for sustaining life 
won't allow you to do it. Are you understanding me now? Yes, so sir. There is no such man. There's no such man. Even if they promise you everything, I will love you to the moon. Is a lie, you? No, it, he has not gotten to the moon before. No God for it. Travel deep into God so that they will not sway you away with all this kind of words. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. If you know God, even if you enter into marriage and see funny characters, God will make you stand strong. Because you have already come in tandem or you already know how to use the God part to fit in what is missing. Romans 12, 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Whether single, whether married, hold God strong. You see this thing, relationship, there is nothing as tedious as relationship. There is nothing as tremendously difficult as relationship and marriage. Do you think it's easy? You grew up from your mother, with your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters. And from one day, they tell you now that you are no longer staying with your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters. It is with that person till Jesus come. If you are 30 years and you get married and you live for 100 years, is it not 70 years together? Till Jesus comes. So, so which means the time you are spending with the person you never knew from Adam is more than the time you are spending with the people you knew from Adam. And you think you should enter into it casually. You are joking. You have to prepare. Travel deep into God before you travel into marriage. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Because... So when you were in your father's and mother's house, when you do one thing, they pet you. When you do one thing, you, pet, you may enter. He was not shouting at you during courtship in marriage before you know he's shouted. You are seeing another, another kind of character. But when you travel deep into God, you know where to bring out the Godness in you to sustain that marriage. There are three ways to travel into God. Belong to a Bible-believing church. Allow God to use you to serve his cause in that church. Use your gift and strength to serve God. Hear me. Jacob married Rachel by serving Laban. Rebecca got married to Isaac by serving Abraham's servant. Your miracle marriage is waiting to happen at the place of selfless service. And that marriage can be sustained by selfless service. Did somebody hear me now? Yes, sir. Number yes, sir. two, discover your true self before discovering who you want to marry. You don't know who you are, but you want to know who you want to marry. Is that is that is does it make sense? Discover, know who you are. Who am I? What makes me angry? What makes me happy? Some of you, you think you know yourself. You don't know yourself. You don't know what makes you happy. You don't know what makes you angry. Some of you think it's money that makes you happy. Until they give you money, you will know that it's not only money that you should be seeking for in happiness. So use your singlehood to invent yourself. Then when you are in marriage, don't stop inventing yourself. What that man knew you for before he married you is what made him love you or what made her love you. Now you are in marriage. Don't remain in status quo. Keep on reinventing yourself. That is what makes the romance. Keep on, keep on going. It becomes easy to know who and what you want when you know who and what you are. Discover your passion, your lifestyle, your temperament, your hunger, your career. All these will help you know the kind of man or woman you should settle with. Number three, build a business before you build a family. Don't fall into marriage without building your own business. Even as a woman, have something you are doing. Any relationship and marriage where your husband must buy everything for you. Even to the extent of your toothbrush, your husband must buy it for you. There is something wrong. A man and a wife, a woman used to have issues. They used to have issues. One day, this woman looked for a way. He went to meet a, a counselor. A counselor told him, what and what have you ever done for your husband since you people got married? He said, I used to buy him. During his birthday, I buy him things. I surprise him. I take good care of his brothers and sisters. I am open to his parents and his mother. The counselor told this woman, all these things you did are natural, normal things. What extra thing have you done that will make this man feel like he's not in this world alone? This is the secret. The woman went back, looked at their house. Since they packed into that house, the house has not been repainted. Not because there is no money, but this man's money is in pay school fees, pay bill, renew rent. So he does not keep 
to renew to repaint the house let me tell you something if you want a man to value you don't do for that man what a woman can do for the man do for that man what the man would have done for himself I don't know if you got me yes sir don't do for that man what a woman would have done for the man do for the man what the man would have done for himself with his money whether you like it or not he will give it back to you one day this woman as the man went on leave or went on a, a travel the woman bought paint paid somebody paid express they repainted the whole house the house was beautiful when the husband came back he looked for instance you know the truth that if a house should be repainted it must be the man it's not the woman's duty true of us true this woman did what the man should have done when the man came back and he saw everywhere sparkling clean the man was like since we've packed it into this house for ages i have not been able to repaint this house my wife you did it that money i would have bring out to do this house the man took the woman out spoiled the woman and problem that was persisting in the marriage although the woman was at fault the problem died down you know why because that thing she did in one way plucked ego ego out of the man what the man would have done the woman have done it if the man continued to shout because of problem it's like it's mumu they worry the man because what you would have done a woman have done it are you seeing this now yes sir. first of all the woman have placed the man in where he belongs then number two he has shown the woman love and care so sometimes as wives as women do for the man not what woman will naturally do for a man but what the man would have done for himself is somebody catching something now yes sir finally number four treat infections or health challenges before joining your better half you are a man you are a woman you know what you are suffering you know what sometimes nine in 10 persons have a health issue they are handling if you are a man you have erectile dysfunction don't deceive that woman and go into marriage with her without telling her the truth you are a woman you have some infections you have some things you know that you know within yourself you can't take it tell the man the truth don't cover up and enter into marriage and then during the marriage the man is walking head and toe spending money but you know where the problem is Is somebody getting me now? Yes, sir. You know where the problem is. You to the man, you know that the problem is from you. This woman has been praying, 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 praying. Open up to each other before you enter into marriage. Where you open up to each other before marriage is not only on genotype. Eh, I am AS, I am AA, I am SS. It's not only in genotype. Also in full health condition. Your HIV status, everything. Open up to each other. Treat what needs to be treated before you enter into a relationship. Don't deceive. If not, God still punishes you. So, so don't deceive each other in relationship. Check cancer. Check respiratory disease. Check depression. Check your aura infection. How healthy is your mouth? Check your diabetes level. Check your chronic reoccurring. If you have chronic reoccurring headache, check if you have a substance abuse you need to control obesity and STDs. These are the things you check. Five, I won't explain it. Prepare for family before entering one. We are going to stand to our feet and pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, every marriage represented here, every relationship represented here, we decree in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, Satan, you are not permitted to plant any evil that will cause unrest in marriage and in families. Open your mouth and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, we cast super evil. Father, Perfect our relationships. Perfect them in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I decree that every marriage represented here, no devil will lie or plant evil in that marriage. Amen. Amen. Love will reign in that marriage. Amen. Peace will reign in that marriage. Amen. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Package your offering, lift it up to heaven. As you pray over it, basket will come near you. Put it in that basket. Have your seat as the media plays the movie and we'll eat our popcorn, serve the juice, wherever you watch the movie too, 
we stop it and we close. Please. You can easily switch to the movie now. Put your offering and then switch to the movie and then do well to share.